I have my own location in Carthage, North Carolina. Got some mud flood winders here. Check them out. And I got one over here. Some mud flood winders. Big zone location. Detroit of the South. Henry Ford came down here. Henry Ford came to Carthage to look at its big buggy factory. Produced about 3,000 buggies a year. Did the buggy factory kind of put Carthage oh, yeah. on the map? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The buggy factory definitely put Carthage on the map. The Tyson and Jones Buggy Company, founded 1857. And the other really cool thing about it is the president of the company was a black man. W.T. Jones, a one-time bootlegger. What he learned from it was how to do lacquers and finishes. And he applied that to the buggies? To the buggies. Why Carthage? This was where they were from. This was their home. Part of the buggy company still stands. Today, it's an antique store. The first assembly line was right there in that parking lot. The nation's very first factory assembly line. Then they say added pieces. It went down to the next floor, to the next floor, and finally at the bottom, it was a finished buggy. Impressive, thought Henry Ford, who visited the factory in 1910. So he came down here because he thought, let's join forces, because automobiles and, you know, the buggies are going out, and they kind of went, and so that's the rest of the story. And, of course, the rest is history, isn't it? Yes, the buggies are history. What happened to the factory? The automobile. And then in 1960, this caught on fire. And this is all that's left of the buggy factory. They're representative of another time, aren't they? You know, it was a slower and more personal time. And the people here in Carthage get a lot of sense of their self from the story of the buggy factory. And we're just trying to spread the word about it because a lot of people come and they're like, this is a really cool town. What's it about? It's about, oh, maybe not lost opportunity but rather a pioneering spirit. Modern day transportation owes some of its roots to Carthage. Absolutely, the Detroit of the South is what they called it. Absolutely, absolutely. So I uh, traveled to Carthage, uh, North Carolina today to go cut up some oak trees for some firewood uh, that a friend of mine kindly donated to me. I really appreciate that. And on our way in, I, this uh, building caught my eye and I wanted to stop and look at the building closer on my way out. And as I was coming out, I saw this sign and it read, uh, it was a state, North Carolina State Historical Marker sign. It read, Buggy Company, Thomas B. Tyson and W.T. Jones Factory produced horse-drawn vehicles sold across South 1850s to 1920s. At peak, made 3,000 per year, stood here. So I walked up to the building and um, took some pictures and um, some video, and it was a nice little mud flutter. And so um, I got home and I was gonna put together a short little clip just showing this little mud flutter that I found and doing um, the research for this, I uh, looking into the building, I found some interesting history on this building. Um, and I just wanted to share it. Um, and this is uh, some information from Wikipedia first. Uh, the, Car the town of Carthage was the home of the Tyson and Jones Buggy Company, a predominant cart and buggy manufacturer in the late 1800s. A common local story is that after the closing of the Tyson Buggy Company, Henry Ford was interested in buying the old plant and converting it into a car assembly line. According to the legend, the owners refused to let Ford buy the plant he moved on and built his first plant in Detroit, making it the center of auto manufacturing. This story is often repeated despite a lack of evidence, and it does not fit, runs contrary uh, to the life of Ford, who was born and raised in Detroit and started his business there. A few years after being closed, the former Tyson buggy plant burned down. Huh. And I found something else. Uh, Carriage Makers Tyson and Jones Buggy Company, 1850 to 1825. Owners Thomas Bethune Tyson, 1850, three, 1850 to 1893. Alexander Kelly, 1856 to 1873. 
William T. Jones, 1859s, 1900s. Location in Carthage, NC. Notes. In 1850, Carthage, NC, Merchant Thomas Bethune Tyson uh, bought an existing wagon a wheelwright repair shop owned by Isaac Sewell and his two sons. In 1856, Thomas B. Tyson and landowner Alexander Kelly formed a partnership to run the wheelwright business and decided to build carriages. The firm was known as Tyson and Kelly, 1856 to 1858. In 1857, Tyson hired William T. Jones as a carriage painter shop uh, supervisor and S.W. Humber as a carriage trimmer. Jones had pr proved his worth as the enterprise expanded and in 1859 the firm was renamed Tyson, Kelly and Company 1859 to 1873. With Jones joining Tyson and Kelly as partner, it manufactured carriages and harnesses. In 1873, Tyson and Jones bought out the partnership of Kelly. The company was renamed Tyson Jones Buggy Company shortly after. In 1876, the company produced 400 buggies. The firm was incorporated in 1889, apparently. At its maximum production, the firm constructed uh, 3,000 carriages slash buggies a year in the 1890s. In 1907, employees of the Tyson Buggy Factory in Carthage incorporated the Sanford Buggy Company and pl uh, planned the construction of a two-story factory at 115 Chatham Street in Sanford, N.C. The Sanford Bugger, uh, Buggy Company was employed, owned, and operated. The popularity of the automobile led to the demise of the Tyson & Jones Buggy Company in 1825. The last buggy reportedly was delivered in 1925 to Neil S. Blue of Rayford who was in his 80s and declared that he would never operate a car. The company was sold and the new owners tried to reestablish it as a furniture manufacturer but were cut short by the depression of 1929. Courier Tribune um, says W.T. Jones was the son of a slave who rose to prominence in Carthage as the owner of Tyson and Jones Buggy Company. In 1876, it produced 400 buggies and was incorporated in 1889. At its maximum production, Tyson and Jones constructed 3,000 carriages a year. Carthage, he was born the son of a slave and her white, uh, white owner in 1883. By the time of his death in 1910, William T. Jones was one of the prominent business owners in Carthage. He rubbed elbows with the elite, white upper class in Moore County during the 1880s, dined with them through elaborate holiday parties where most of the guests were white and even attended church with them. Both of his wives, Sophia and Isabel McLean and Florence Dockery, were white. Dockery was the daughter of a well-to-do Apex family. Uh, yet until a decade ago, few, few in his small Moore County town acknowledged out loud that Jones was not a white man. Then Pat Mo Motes Frazier entered the scene in 2005. She purchased Jones's home built in 1880 for his wife, Florence, and today runs it as a bed and breakfast aptly named the Old Buggy Inn. He built this huge elaborate house because he and his wife wanted to fill it with children. Mots Fraser says, unfortunately, they never had any. Mots Fraser had in, uh, ran into many brick walls while trying to research the history of the historic Victorian home. Slowly and methodically, she finally put together pieces of the puzzle of what was a remarkable story of Jones, one man who in the 19th century never let the color of his skin define him. At the age 27, Jones and many other buggy company workers joined the Confederate Army. By 1864, he had risen to the rank of first lieutenant, and his unit was his unit was eventually captured in Virginia and sent to Fort Delaware, where they spent the better part of a year. Even the entrepreneur um, Jones started picking up potato peelings and saving crust from bread to make homemade moonshine. He sold his fiery concoction to the prison guards and local townspeople. He was paid in union currency for his product, according to Mott's Frazier. He came back to North Carolina with an estimated $3,000 in his pocket. Smart man. When the war was over that, uh, and came back to Carthage, Sherman had marched through. 
there was devastation. People were starving. They couldn't reopen the buggy company because all they had was Confederate money. It was worthless. Watch Fraser says. They reopened the company with Mr. Jones's moonshine money. The company was originally known as Tyson and Kelly and then Tyson Kelly and Company. A growing legacy. Mott Fraser discovered that in 1873 the company was renamed the Tyson and Jones Buggy Company. In 1876 it produced 400 buggies and was incorporated in 1889. At its maximum production Tyson and Jones constructed 3,000 carriage buggies a year. The popularity of the automobile led to the closure of the carriage buggy company in 1925. In rec recording his death November 29, 1910, histor history records, uh, Colonel W.T. Jones, president of the Tyson and Jones Buggy Company of Carthage, died this morning after the gradual decline for the last three years. His death, the local, after his death, the local newspaper reporter Jones was a citizen regarded in all respects as probably the peer of any living or dead in usefulness and accomplished purpose and withal in the example and model which he has left the present and future generations. The race of this Confederate soldier Methodist Sunday school teacher, town leader, and prosperous industrialist was almost erased from Carthage history. His photograph never appeared in any Tyson Jones catalog. In one history book dated 1981, his face is in there in a photo. However, his name is not listed as the owner of the buggy company. Jones is buried at Cross Hill Cemetery just down the road from his former home. Today, the Carthage Buggy Festival festival proudly separates the achievements of this former slave and so the moral of this story is that um, i saw this building on the side of the road and i stopped and i took some pictures and then i did a little research and digging a little deeper i found a wonderful little story of a mud flutter uh, and found out that there was even bigger buildings that were right beside it they were also mud flutters and um, this, the building had a wonderful little history. Now, I'm sure you can sense that there's a lot of uh, false narrative in this story. Um, but I just think it's wonderful to uh, dig a little bit deeper on these roadside finds. Um, and you can find, uh, you know, true history if you just dig a little bit deeper. Hope you enjoyed. Love, Biggs. again say wolf again i've got one that can see this is my kung fu and it is strong see you later